say a warming climate is not very advantageous for glaciers, is it? Yes, that is true. <laughs> that is definitely true. As we wanted to see how much of an influence does climate have on the regional response. And we found that in general, on a regional or even Greenland ice wide scale, tide water glaciers react similarly to atmospheric and oceanic forcings. Hi, I'm Dr. Dominic Fahne. Um, I'm a glaciologist at the University of Oregon. I'm currently a postdoc in the Griso Net project, and I'm looking at ice ocean interactions in Greenland. So we investigate the advance and retreat of tide water glaciers in Greenland by mapping all the margin positions for 34 years. In total, 3,801 terminus positions. Yes. That's a lot. How so, did you do that? Um, we use a cloud computing tool in Google Earth Engine called GDIT, um, which is the Google Earth Engine digis digitization tool, um, <laughs> which was developed by my supervisor, uh, my PhD, James Lee, at the University mm -hmm. of Liverpool. And it definitely made it a lot easier to map these terminus positions um, because you can just, like the satellite images are automatically loaded and you don't need to download them, which is great. It's doing that for 34 years for 200 glaciers would take forever. A lot of manual labor. So and this tool yes. works like it loads the satellite image in, analyzes it, and then tells you where the, like the margin of the glacier is where the terminus positions. Uh, not quite. Um, not quite, or oh, could be so easy, huh? Unfortunately not, no. <laughs> um, it loads the satellite image and then lets you draw the margin. So you need to manually put the vertices onto where the margin is, and then you can export it as a file, and it gives you where the glacier was at a time. Yeah. So you drew 3,801 terminus positions by hand in satellite images? It, it was probably more than that um, <laughs> because we had to discard some of them because there was like the terminus was obscured by melange, so we excluded them. But yes, in general, I did. How that. long did that take? Uh, it took quite a while. It took about three months. Wow, that's respect. <laughs> It, yeah, my <laughs> wrist still hurts from like clicking a thousand <laughs> times a day. <laughs> my God, someone really should like invent some artificial intelligence KI tool to do that automatically. Hmm? Um, there is someone working on that, or quite a few people. Uh, one that comes to mind is Daniel Cheng at JPL. Mm -hmm. He's doing uh, neural networks to detect terminus positions automatically. And it works quite well, but it it's, can still be improved. Oh, well, that's great. We'll, we'll spare your wrist quite some yeah. clicking labor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So, and then you had these incredible amount of terminus positions from, how many glaciers did you investigate? 206. 206, all around the Greenland margins. Yes, so, but in our analysis, we excluded um, the north of Greenland because um, yeah, we didn't have enough observations because it's quite cloudy in, mm. in the winter, so it's quite difficult to, to map these terminus positions. Yeah, okay, but except for northern Greenland, you have like the whole Greenland margins, and you separated these glaciers there into different regions, like the northwest, northeast, southwest, southeast. Yes, so we use the, the ice divides to mm -hmm. separate them into regions, which is fairly common. Can you, can you explain to an oceanographer what are ice divides? Um, it's basically the highest point from where it flows into one direction. So it's, how, do you, how do you call that? Um, <laughs> um, well, basically, think about a peak like on a, on a mountain. The ice always flows either left or right. Okay. So that is what an ice divide is in general. Like a topographic conduit for the ice. Yeah, it's like from, if you think about summit station, which is 
at the summit of the ice sheet, the ice always flows outwards, right? Yeah. Yeah. Makes so. sense because of gravity, huh? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's the principle of ice divides. Okay. Glaciers separated into regions, and then you map their like average retreat, right? Yes. So we mapped, we basically calculated the retreat of every individual glacier, normalized those results, and then grouped them together to see um, if there is like an overall response each year and what it looks like over time. Mm -hmm. And then you related these observed trends in glacial retreat to environmental conditions such as warming air temperature, sea surface temperature, what else? Um, we also looked at ice discharge and runoff. Mm -hmm. um, and but, ice discharge yeah. are like the, the little icebergs in the melange that are like falling off of the glacier and are discharged through the fjord? Yes, so ice discharge is basically measured by a, a gate, which is just a cross section of the glacier upstream, and then the ice floats through that, and you that's you measure that how much ice flows through it. Okay. So and now, what makes the glaciers retreat? Um, well, that's a very good question, <laughs> and not not straightforward to answer, unfortunately. So it's quite difficult to look at individual climate drivers um, because they're all connected, right? So if the air warms, the ocean will warm too, and the other way around. So we try to figure out if there's like a single driver that forces tidewater glaciers to retreat. Um, and we found some correlations um, in the northwest and the southeast of the Greenland ice sheet. So in the southeast, we found that summer air temperatures are quite influential. And in the northwest, it's sea surface temperatures. Um, but because all of the climate forcings are connected, it's very difficult to say it's one or the other because it has to all work together. Um, so what, now the oceanographer again, you did not look at deep ocean temperatures because from my oceanographic perspective, we not only have like a warming surface ocean from direct atmospheric forcing, we also have trends in the heat of the Atlantic water that flows like around the Atlantic and also around the Greenland coastal margins and is found in the fjord. So why couldn't you look at that? Um, I did include um, deep water ocean temperature averages for each individual glacier in the supplements for context, but there is still a fundamental lack of deep water ocean temperature, especially long term in fjords, uh, near Tidewater Glacier Termini and um, on the shelf. So it's really difficult to find data for most of the glaciers which is why we use the available sea surface temperature data sets. So we should definitely put more temperature loggers out there and yes. collect all the CTD data that has been there before. Huh? Yes, that sounds like <laughs> a brilliant idea. What's your, your key takeaway message? Um, can I have two? You can have two. Generous today. Um, well, I think the most exciting finding was when we looked at the normalized trends for each region and they were all linear and they all started around the same time, which basically suggests that Tidewater Glacier behavior on a larger scale is homogeneous and that the topographic setting or other individual factors are not so much of an influence when you look at the big picture. Mm -hmm. And the second thing would be that ice discharge does not necessarily vary that much when you take out the main contributing glaciers. 
which we identified as 11 glaciers that contribute the most to ice discharge of the green ice sheet. If you take them out, um, the ice discharge is still variable, but it, it equals out over time, which is quite interesting because that also suggests that while most high water glaciers are retreating, they don't necessarily produce more ice discharge. So they're melting rather than ice discharging? Yes. And when you said the retreat of all the glaciers started around the same time, when was it and why? <laughs> um, so <laughs> Is that a the... naive question to ask? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's quite a good question to ask, especially the why. Um, so they all, well, not all. So in the southwest, northwest, and southeast, Tidewater Water Glacier Retreat started around the mid to late 1990s. And it has been associated with um, changes in ocean, ocean temperatures, um, warming air temperatures. Um, yeah, in the northeast, um, retreat started later, according to some studies. Well, what we found is that it actually started earlier. So we found that in the Northeast, the retreat started in the mid 80s and accelerated in the early 2000s. Um, we, we can't really attribute any driver to that yet. So I would say it's deep ocean temperatures. I mean, deep ocean temperatures seem to make um, quite a good driver for melting high water glaciers. <laughs> So yes. Could that Definitely. be the next thing, the next thing to look at, trying to get a hand on trends in deep ocean temperatures around Greenland and in fjords, which is super hard because there's just not enough data, and see if we can attribute or you can attribute some of the response of the tide water glaciers to that? That is the plan. So if people are interested now, your paper is called, can I show that, linear response of the Greenland ice sheet tidewater glaciers. Terminus position. position to climate. <laughs> and yes. it was published in 2021 in the Journal of Glaciology. Yes. Right. And open access? Oh, of course. Of course, open, open access. access. Yes. <laughs> so if you're interested, have a read. And yeah, I'm always have, feel free. Any questions? Any question, yeah. Yes. Just you send me an email. Is really approachable. Um, you can like our YouTube channel. I learned that you have to say stuff like this, yes. like subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you like what we are doing here, leave us a comment, leave us some encouragement. And if you would like to have your paper featured in this interview, it has to be related to Greenland, but we take anything, glaciology, oceanography. I would be super interested in ecology, actually. Just give us a call. Write us an email, contact us on Twitter at Greece Greenland, and then we're going to make it happen. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day. Bye. Bye.